Today, it will be you, me, and the legend of question 6. And as you all know, now the questions can be called the legend. However, this right here is the one. And of course, we are talking about the 1988. I am for question number 6. You should have seen a video by number 5 where they talk about this question and especially how difficult this is. I've been trying to understand the proof of this for a while now. Unfortunately, I couldn't. But luckily, recently, I found a website in Taiwan and they have a solution that I actually was able to follow. So I wanted to demonstrate that for you guys as well so you can understand this too. Well, before we get into the math, let me just give a big birthday wish to you all. Happy birthday and thank you so much for being a fan of my channel and your support. Thank you. Happy birthday. All right, let's go over this right here first. Right here it says, let a and b be past the integers, and that's the notation, such that a squared plus b squared over ab plus 1 is equal to a past the integer right here. So in another word, you can say ab plus 1 divides a squared plus b squared, right? That's actually the original wording, but we'll actually use this because it's easier to work out equations from here. Well, if we end up with an integer, we are going to show that the number k has to be a perfect square. So let me give you guys an example. Right here, let me just say if a is equal to 8 and b is equal to 2, plug in, then you see that a squared plus 2 squared is equal to a times 2 plus 1. Of course, on the top is what? 68 on the bottom is 17. When we divide, do we end up with a whole number? Yes, we do. And the statement says whenever you end up with a whole number, that number has to be a perfect square. In our case, we end up with 4. Of course, this is the same as 2 squared. So it checks. And let me give you guys another example. If we end up with, let's say, a is equal to 3, b is equal to 2, then we are talking about 3 squared plus 2 squared over 3 times 2 plus 1. On the top, we get 13. On the bottom, we get 7. Well, guess what? This does not even turn out to be an integer so that we don't care, right? So that this right here, we don't care at all. So, let's go ahead and get started. Here is the most exciting thing that I like to do whenever we're trying to do a proof. Namely, writing down the PF. Seriously, every time. It reminds me of the good old college days because sometimes that's the only thing I was able to do. Anyway, how do we show the output is a um, perfect square? Well, uh, it might not be so easy if you do it directly, so we'll try to do it by contradiction, right? So indirect proof right here. So let me just tell you guys, here we go, by contradiction. We are going to assume that, based on all this already, we are going to assume that this turns out to be an integer, but that integer k is not a perfect square. Assume k is not a perfect square. So I'll just write down PS for perfect square, right? And because we'll be referring to this equation quite often, so I will actually just say this equation is star so that it's easier to do so as well. All right, now, here is the deal. Have a look. We have this equation now, right? It turns out to be an integer, but the integer, we are assuming it's not a perfect square. Well, A, B, they are, perf they are positive integers. And whenever we have a set of positive integers, we can assume that there is a smallest element. Well, so here we go. We are going to let a1, b1, b the smallest, we can also say minimum, be the smallest solution to star, right? So we can plug in a1 and b1 into here, and then we end up with some k. And we'll work with the k, and we'll show that uh, if k is a perfect square or not, or whatsoever, right? So we have that. However, another thing to notice that though, if you look at this right here, earlier I picked a to be 8 and b to be 2. But what if I do a is equal to 2 and b is equal to 8? What do we get? Well, you see that it actually does not matter, because if you just switch a and b, the output will still be the same, right? Because just look at, if you swap A and B, doesn't change anything. So this is what we can do next. 
we have a and b a1 b1 be the smallest solution to this right here and i'm just going to assume that without loss of generality so wlog assume that a1 is less than well let's do the greater than let's say a1 it's a bigger number let's do it like this a1 is actually bigger than what may be equal to b1 like this and of course you can have the other way around and an argument is you know identical so you can just say assume loss of generality put this down and we can continue if this gives us the result the other way will give us the result as well so now here we go we have a1 and b1 to work with we can put this into this right here of course right so we have a1 square plus b1 square over a1 b1 plus 1 this right here is equal to k now isn't it so that's, that's what we have and then of course let me just go ahead and continue the math right here the best part right here is that we can do some algebra so i'm going to just multiply this on both sides and i will collect all the terms to the right hand side so this right here is going to give us so look here i will keep this right here namely we have a1 square and next i will have to do this times k and it has a1 right and i will bring that to the left hand side so it becomes negative and then let me put on k b1 first and then i will have the a1 right here all right continue this well we still have the plus b1 square and we will have to do k times one on the right hand side bring that to the other side so we get minus k and of course all this is equal to zero so that's good now have a look here is a1 square here is a1 and the rest are just numbers so what's this yes it's a quadratic equation so we can say the following notice a1 is a solution to the quadratic equation x squared minus kb1x and then plus b1 squared minus k equal to zero right and now of course whenever we have a quadratic equation how many solutions do we have two right so a1 is one of them already let's say let a2 be the other solution well is a2 complex is a2 decimal numbers whatsoever well we are going to investigate a2 now so because a2 is just another solution to this quadratic equation of course we can plug in a2 and this right here still works so we can say that a2 square minus k b1 a2 plus b1 square minus k this right here has to be equal to zero that's very nice well notice that here's the deal we have a1 and a2 being the solutions to a quadratic equation we can actually write the quadratic equation as follows we can also write we may write may write the quadratic equation perhaps i'll just put it down uh, with double star in blue right we may write double star as x minus a1 times x minus a2 equals zero and that's very nice and again this is just the factory form and of course we can write this into this and of course we can also expand this a little bit to do so we see that we get x squared and then this times this is just and this times this both of them have the negative and factor that out and then we have the a1 plus a2 inside and that's the x term and then this times this is just plus a1 a2 equal to zero so in another word we can put this into this form and now what can we say well here is the coefficient of x likewise this is the same as well and here is the constant term and we can also say that's the same as well and this is where if you would like to be fancy you can say this is the fiat theorem and that's just pretty much a proof and of course it's just the quadratic situation so you can just do it like this right so here's the deal we know now we have a1 plus a2 is equal to this 
and we can somehow of course we can isolate the a2 and then we can somehow investigate how a2 should behave right so let me just go ahead and minus a1 on both sides so we get this right here says a2 is equal to this right here which is k b1 both of them have the negative already don't worry and bring this to the other side so minus a1 right just solve for the a2 likewise i can just divide the a1 from here to here so we get a2 this is equal to we have this which is b1 square minus k over a1 and now we have this right so now we can do some investigation first can a2 be a decimal number no because notice a1 b1 and k they are all positive integers so right here we can say a2 has to be an integer right so that's pretty clear because everybody here is integer and integer is closed under subtraction and multiplication so that's good now if you see a2 is equal to this on the top we have b1 squared minus k but what did we say about k well we said that k is not a perfect square it's not a perfect square so it can never be the same as some number square in another word on the top right here this is never the same as that so this can never be zero so from here we can say that a2 will never be equal to zero and perhaps you can say because k is not a perfect square so we did have to use our assumption from here right here right so that's great and that's good a2 is an integer but that's not zero cannot be negative though because you know sometimes uh you have some subtraction is dangerous so we have to do it carefully and now let me just come back here and um i don't really want to erase the question so i will actually just erase this right all right so that's what we have. all right now let's see if a2 is positive or negative whatsoever right from here where did this equation come from here and just substitute the a2 into this equation right here right and where did this come from of course just from here so of course if you would like you can put this equation into that form as well so i will just tell you from the equation a2 square plus b1 square over a2 b1 plus 1 equals k have a look here k is positive this is positive so i just say this is greater than zero and likewise this right here a2 square plus b1 square this right here it's also positive because it's the sum of two squares plus one is positive for sure and notice b1 well it's a positive integer so that means b1 has to be greater than or equal to one now when we have all this condition here can a2 be negative can a2 be negative one no that will ruin everything no can a2 be negative two no we end up with a contradiction that the left hand side is being negative then and then the right hand side is still positive so from here we can say a2 has to be greater than zero right so with all this now we see a2 is in the set of positive integers right because we have this this and that Oh good. Now, earlier we mentioned that a1, b1, they are the smallest solution to this right here. And we somehow have to use that as well. And here we have this new guy, which is a2. How is a2 compared with a1? Well, remember I have a assumption that. So from the assumption, from the assumption that a1 was greater than or equal to b1 have a look right here let's go ahead and square both sides and this is of course they are passing the integers so we can square them and in that case the inequality will still hold from here we can say a1 is greater than or equal to b1 
with the square right here. And again, because both of them are greater than zero, so this inequality holds. Now, I will just keep the A1 square on the left-hand side, and then B1 square right here, except for I would like to minus K on the right-hand side. And if we do that, because K is a positive number, this subtract positive number, I can say A1 is bigger than this, right? So they cannot equal to each other anymore. What good does that do? Have a look. I'm going to divide the A1 on both sides, and I'm going to just keep this right here for you guys real quick. Right? You'll see. Divide A1 on both sides, so we get A1, normal square, because this right here is, I want to divide on both sides, and A1 is positive, I can divide on both sides, no big deal. Still greater than, this is greater than B1 square minus K divided by A1, and what's this? This right here is nicely equal to A2. So we can say this right here is nicely equal to A2. Thus, we see that A2 is actually smaller than A1. And this is strictly smaller than A1. Hmm, is this possible? Well, earlier we have said that you know, A2 is the solution to this. And it fits all the conditions. However, A1 was supposed to be the smallest, and now we found one guy right here, A2. That's actually smaller than A1. So what happens? Something must be wrong, right? Thus, A2 is less than A1. I will just tell you which contradicts, contradicts. our assumption that assumption, or just spell assumption yourself, our assumption that A1, B1 were the smallest. The smallest. Because now we see A2, B1, it's smaller than this, right? So this right here, it's assumption that we can just say it contradicts. So what's wrong though? Well, this right here. Remember our original assumption is what? Let me just write this down for you guys. Let's see, which contradicts our assumption that A1, B1, oh, let me just write it down better again, I'm sorry. Which contradicts our, contradicts the previous Assumption that uh, A1 is the smallest, right? So again, the thought process is that now A2, B1 also solves that, but A2 is smaller than B1, and that contradicts that A1 is being the smallest. So let's see how we can finally write down the punchline right here. Smallest. Therefore, our oops, first assumption, first assumption was wrong. Our first assumption about k. Remember the first line is that we assume for a contradiction that k is not a perfect square. So we are saying that our first assumption about k is wrong. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, we conclude that K has, oh my God, to be a, let me spell this out because man, this is the final line. K has to be a perfect square. Oh my God. And of course, I will give you a perfect square right here at the end. All right? Whew.